like competitions, and I like winning. I guess that's pretty much me. <laughs> Well, if Zemesco likes to win, she's got her work cut out for her. Henrietta Onodi scored a 9.912 earlier. However, the floor exercise is one of Zemesco's best events. She placed first in the preliminaries and was a bronze medalist on this event at the World Championships. And it's a new routine. You can see immediately the difference in her tumbling. Very fast, very quick. the tumbling pass that everyone waits for. Count them three whip backs all the way through to a double back. One, two, three. Very nicely done. Let's see if she does it. She's going for it. Nice work. This is what event finals is all about. You go for everything. And she did. A deafening roar of applause for perhaps one of the most emotional favorites on the floor. John, there's something very important here. After the World Championships in the fall, a lot of people said she did not have the difficulty to be the world champion. Well, she has risen to the occasion right here, decided to challenge them and show them that they can do it, that she can do more difficult passes. This is what I'm most impressed with Kim about. She typically finished her routine with a double back, but instead she has pushed her potential. And this has worked for her. But she makes it. A very poised and confident performance. The official marks are in. 9.937. That's good enough for a gold medal for Kim Zemesko. And one of the first to congratulate her, the runner-up, Henrietta Onodi from Hungary. A very warm and sincere congratulations. So we take a look at the official results. Kim Zemeskel wins it, proving that the Indianapolis victory was no fluke. It's the first time an American woman has won a gold on individual apparatus in 14 years. Kim, I know nothing can compare to winning the all-around title last fall in Indianapolis, but do you think, does this send a message to the rest of the world that you can win outside the United States? Uh, yes, because a lot of people were criticizing me that I only won it because I was in the U.S. and that my tumbling was not strong enough to get a bronze on the floor, and I upgraded my tumbling, and I won a gold here, so I'm real happy. Certainly has to make you feel good. What does this do for the Olympics coming up so close in Barcelona? Well, they're very close, so the judges, you know, are still going to remember what happened here, and so will everybody else, and it gives me a lot of confidence going to the next couple months. Well, good luck with your training and in Barcelona. Happy Easter. <laughs> The reigning all-around world champion captured the gold medal in the floor exercise, the first American to do so in an individual apparatus event since 1978. Today, Kim goes for a second gold in the balance beam. So right now, let's join John Neighbor, Bart Connor, and Kathy Johnson in Paris for the remaining event finals. April in Paris. Chestnuts in blossom. Holiday tables under the trees. April in Paris. This is a feeling no one can ever. 
never reprise. Welcome to one of the great cities of Europe. Today we're in Paris, France for our continuing coverage of the 1992 World Gymnastics Championships. Once again, we're indoors on the banks of the Seine at the Pelé Omnisport for the second day of individual event finals. The team in all-around competitions will occur in next year's annual championships. Henrietta Onodi won two medals for Hungary, while Kim Zameskel won America's first gold medal for women in individual event apparatus finals since 1978. The competitor is an American who finished fourth in the all-around competition at the last World Championships, 16-year-old Betty Okino. The first release move is right here. It's a very high front somersault. Nicely done. Here's her second release move. Now, the most important thing Betty has done since the World Championships is increase the level of difficulty on this dismount right there. Nicely done. At the World Championships, there was a lot of criticism over Betty Okino's score on the uneven bars because of the weakness of her dismount. And as I said, she has increased that difficulty. Look at the height on this release move. The judges look for the regress to be made above the bar. Betty is more than high enough. The dismount is a clear hip front flip with a half twist. Now, I believe if she could do that in laid out position by the time the Barcelona Olympics comes, this will really stand up a lot better in world competition. Well, it's standing up pretty well here, Kathy. She gets a 9.90 from the judges, and that's our leader for now. Her first sequence is unbelievable, highly innovative. Watch this, a full pirouette. These are called inverted giants. Right into her first release move, a front somersault. Every skill is of great value. Here's her third release move, way up above the bar. Her dismount is a double layout. Watch the stretched position. Oh, no, and a big hop on the landing. Unfortunately, that's going to be a significant deduction. And what a shame, because unfortunately, because of the rules, she really doesn't get a lot of extra credit for having the most difficult routine. Watch this. It used to be we only saw these skills done on men's high bar. Only a few women can do that. Look at the height above the bar on the release move. Now she goes right to low bar into another skill of value, a stalder. Beautiful work. Now, unfortunately, this is where she had some problem. It was gorgeous in the air, stretched body position in the double somersault, came out a little short and took a big hop forward. And so the 65-pounder from China, Lu Li, scores a 9.875, good enough for second place behind America's Betty Okino. Slovenia Milosevic from Romania. This is a nice mount sequence right here. Quite original, right up to the high bar. Her first release move is a ginger, a flyaway with a half twist. Yuak Yul scores, by the way, in the vault, 9.725 for an average of 9.675. She finished up with her final release move, a reverse heck. Here comes the dismount. It's a full twisting double back. A little sloppy in the air, but she fights for that landing. Besides the first part of the routine, which I really like, the rest of the routine was not nearly as spectacular as Lou Lee's. And the release move, right here, you can see they're not quite as high as Lou Lee or Betty Okino. But unfortunately, in the code of points or the judging system, all of these routines are all worth the same, a maximum of 10.0. As I said, Lou Lee really didn't get a lot of credit for doing a much more difficult routine. So the difference could be right here on the landing. You'll see she has a much better landing than Lou Lee did. So the mark for Milosevic, 9.950. That puts her into the lead. To Houston, Texas, to train with Bella Caroli and alongside Kim Zameskel. We asked her if she competes as well as she practices. Sometimes in the meet, I'll do better, but overall, I'm more consistent and stuff in the workout, which is kind of annoying sometimes because you know you can do it, and then, like Kim, who goes out there and just shows something different than she does in workout, it's really 